Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video I'm going to cover some new refilling techniques that I have discovered that actually work on a bunch of the newer Epson type cartridges, especially OEM. I have been using refillables for all of these printers. I have in-house probably every R series printer and several others and many of them utilize two types of carts. One type is the type that is used on the earlier older style which is like the 2200 photo stylus 2200 and the 2400 or the R2400 and they allow refilling a special way. This is a card for the R2400 and when you look at them from underneath you will notice that there are two circular indentations on this piece of um, gray tape. These are the original refilling holes for this type of card. So in order for you to be able to refill the 2200, the R2400, and the I believe the earlier versions of the R300 series and even earlier the R200 series they had they all had this type of covered up couple of vents now if you have seen my earlier fairly long video on refilling Epson carts there I discussed how to refill OEM cars using special little valves that are available through rjettech.com they're convenient you push open that opening this is just tape covering a hole there's a special tool you just push open that opening and you pop one of these little valves in and using a special type tip you run a tube from the exit port back to an empty ink bottle and you inject ink with a regular syringe through here and you see the ink start to come out out of the tubing into the waste container and old ink is pushed out or any remain, remaining ink, any remnant of ink is pushed out and the internal components are actually properly filled and that's the way the original carts are filled at the factory then they just basically put this uh, sealing tape over the two holes and you're ready to go well now I have a better method and one that I just discovered now it's hard to see let me orient this a special way right here if you can see that there's a circular looking item with a crisscross on it and if you were to poke a hole there's a chamber in there I have actually dissected a couple of these carts there's a chamber there that I had no idea what it you know its purpose was but now I do and we'll get to that a little bit later in order to reset the majority of Epson cards you need two types of resetters and those are available at rjettech.com and I will provide the link to those at the end of this presentation but for the for example for this one which is a uh, R2400 card it's a simple matter of popping it together and the little green light will blink that means this card is reset alright so now let's go ahead and look at another type of card a newer type of card and we'll look at the TO87 this is for the R1900 there is a difference these newer cards and, and the R2880 also has them they have what's called an air sensor I call it a wetness sensor basically what it does it can detect that the content of the card has dropped to a certain level even though your indicator on your computer will tell you you still have ink once that sensor detects air 
instead of wet ink, it's basically shorted out. There's a minute amount of electricity always running through the the um, chip because that's how it communicates with the, with the uh, printer driver to tell it how much ink is left approximately. It's just a, it's just a counter. It is actually counting down every time you print. It's not actually measuring uh, actual ink volume, of course. So, how accurate is it? Eh, you know, it's fairly accurate, but not absolutely accurate. Anyway, so once you reach a certain level, it will then render, and I'll just go ahead and pop this open so that you can see. I always like to demonstrate a lot of these little idiosyncrasies of these cards. I'll pop this open. Basically, I'll just sacrifice this. It'll make it very easy. Okay. Now, I'll have to go ahead and zoom in and, and show you what this actually looks like. Here's the back of the chip. And unlike regular chips that do not have these two little contacts here, these do. What they do is they communicate with this little device right here. This is a sensor. Inside the cart, the opposite end of that sensor lives or resides. And that's what is actually measuring or detecting the presence of wet ink or air, for that matter. Once it detects air, it renders this inoperative. So it will no longer communicate with the chip. And because it's not communicating with the chip, it tells the the uh, printer driver to not accept this card. Whether you reset the chip or not, it will not accept the card. So let's go ahead and pop this back in and uh, go ahead and proceed to reset this chip. All right, as you can see, I have popped the chip back in position and I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. And this one, you hold it like so and the light turns green okay so now the chip is reset now I have no idea how quote unquote empty this cart was so whether I'm able to refill it or not it may not accept it so the trick with a cart that has a wetness sensor or air sensor is to never allow them to get 20% but I have been able to reset one that was down to about 10% and it's all you know you visualize it on your on your uh, ink monitor you have to kind of you know it's splitting hairs at that point all right so now let's proceed to how we're going to allow one of these cards to be able to accept ink and I mean directly through the bottom port which is probably the most ideal way to do that. Now, Arjet Tech has a device, basically it's just a jig, that will take and allow you to hold one of these carts. It'll have a base, it'll have a side, and it'll have an arm that swivels over the cart with a type of uh, tip that will enter the port. And then you have a side arm that comes up, interlocks, and you have a little thumb screw to hold the whole thing together tightly and sealed perfectly and then the upper arm has a lure lock type adapter so that you can attach a syringe directly to it all right so here's the secret let me just demonstrate and I'll use one of the ones that I have not converted yet okay for example this red for the R1900 Okay, so we'll go ahead and reset it, <clears throat> and we'll just go through the motions again. I have no no clue how empty this cart was allowed to get, and you can see this one is not resetting, so this one is bad. Okay, so that takes care of that. We cannot use that one. Let's try this magenta, or let's try. Let's see, what do we have? a black let's try this black 
And again, I pulled these out of my 1900 a long time ago. Okay, that one's fine. So this one I can probably use. All right. So the procedure goes as follows. If I try to inject ink, say I have to, let me see if there's anything left in here, first of all. And there is a little bit of black ink. Not very, not very much at all. Just mostly air. Okay, now once, remember, once the cart is outside the printer and no longer connected to the printer carriage, it is not receiving any electrical impulses. So it cannot neutralize or, or kill that wetness sensor. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this. I'll be right back. That's just one of my pet peeves with some of these uh, printers and there's nothing we could do about it. That's that's the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I have just a syringe of air and I'm going to pop it in and try to inject. And you can see that it's, it's you can see it's just pushing the syringe back. Well, I never thought to push beyond that and this I actually saw look at the air coming back out the little bit of air in the in the priming chamber coming back out and pushing the last remnants of ink out now Argitex sells that device for 210 whopping dollars and this is what what it allows you to do basically you take I don't have a 20 ml syringe but I just have a 10 here you once you have it mounted on the device and it's going to be presented in this orientation get a clean syringe draw up about 20 ml of air there's a membrane inside this circular unit here some sort of diaphragm they claim it is and that's what's blocking when you try to push ink into the port this diaphragm comes into play and it's blocking the ink from going in and what they have you do is inject enough air to rupture the diaphragm no ink is going to come out it has nothing to do with ink, internal ink circulation or the internal uh, ink chamber whatsoever so this is the scary part and at first I thought oh my god this is crazy but I tried it and it works so I'm gonna go ahead and push the syringe in and slowly carefully I'm going to push here and it's, it's gonna pop you're gonna hear a little pop hopefully did you hear that so that was the chamber rupturing and now I'm able to push air in so I'm gonna go ahead and at this point you can simply fill up a syringe with the proper third-party ink. So you would fill this up with ink and then inject it. Now, how much ink do we put in? How do we know? There's really no way. With the earlier system that I showed you, you just load up a big old syringe of ink, start pushing, pushing it in through this port, and eventually you will get a solid stream of ink coming out of the uh, attachment that goes into the exit port and at that point you know you have filled up that cart okay because no air is coming out there are no bubbles so the only way to know how much ink to load is to take an empty cart such as this one we wait on a gram scale and we can see that it weighs around 22 grams and I'll compare this to some of the other ones that I know are empty this is 20 grams this one's 20 grams and so on okay so now we have here let's see this one this one has some fluid in it no nope. yeah 20 grams perfectly so let's just say that an empty TO87 
weighs 20 grams. So let's go ahead and get a brand new one. This is a brand new one. Still in the uh, little seal. We'll take it out and we will proceed to weigh it. And we have 32. So 32 minus 20 gives us 12 ml. So that's how much ink we will load on our syringe to proceed to fill it up. Okay, so as you remember or recall, I modified the photo black, which is this one here. And next to it I have the matte black, which has not been modified at all. And I'm going to hopefully we will not make a mess. Matte black is a very messy color to deal with. I'm going to insert and one thing you have to be aware of that you should not inject any air into the cart. So make sure that when you draw your ink you have absolutely or as close to zero air in your syringe. It's a no no. You don't want air in that in that system. So I'm going to push and I'm pushing. I'm just it's causing my my plunger to pop back out and actually in it's drawing black out of the uh, cart as you can see. There's a little bit of uh, ink still left in there. And it's impossible to push. Okay, so I'm going to carefully this is where you should be wearing gloves and I'm I'm just as guilty as anyone else. And again, I hate matte black working with it. I love the way it works on matte paper, obviously. So this one needs to have the diaphragm ruptured. Now I'll do the same with the one we just modified. And push it in. Now when when I saw the item, the jig from Arja Tech being used, they ruptured the diaphragm in this position. But when they began to push ink into the cartridge, they held it in this position. And there's indicators on the actual unit. So now we're going to go ahead and inject just plain water. I switched over to one of the uh, gloss differential ones because I really don't want to make a mess in here as you saw with the black. So basically I just want you to see how the water is readily injectable back into the cart. Now this is a vent right here and when you're doing actual colored ink I would suggest you wear gloves. I would suggest you put this over either a sink or a pan or some sort of um, device that would allow you to catch any overflow because as air is exhausted through here you will get remnants of uh, colored ink also being exhausted. So let's go ahead and insert. And I'm going to push it in and hold it at a slight angle because I'll point something out to you. The little plunger that's in there actually presses against the tip and basically causes a seal. So you want to divert around that plunger. And now there are special refilling tips that one can get at various places. And I'm just going to go ahead and you can see the bubbles coming out. And that's what I'm talking about. You would want to make sure you catch that. That's just air being pushed out and it also includes some of that leftover remnants of ink. So you will want to slowly push it in and just wait until you have no more bubbles. And it takes a bit of time to equalize the pressure internally. 
and you could imagine if this was matte black what a mess that would make but yeah refilling is is messy it's a messy enterprise and that's why a lot of people uh, are too afraid to do it even even with refillable carts which are very convenient to use but simply they just do not provide the quality of um, ink flow that one can get from using OEM carts all right so now again and this I would suggest you do this over the sink you will pop this off you will get a squirt of ink usually coming out the bottom as you are releasing the valve until the little white portion of the valve seals against the uh, rubber seal and this is ready to be used when they remanufacture carts when you often see remanufacture rather than compatible compatible means they've actually um, created a new cartridge which is not as efficient as the OEM one and filled it with ink you may or may not get the type of full ink flow that you get from an OEM cart you may end up starving your printhead of ink and that's a no-no now when you hear or see the word remanufactured that just simply means that they took OEM carts and refilled them how did they refill them very likely using the same method I just did but with a machine okay so basically you end up with a third-party ink in a OEM cart okay and here I have my brand new cart reading 30 grams and the one I just filled reading this thing has an accuracy of like two grams it's not a very good uh, it's, it's really meant for uh, uh, weighing uh, things to be shipped by mail I have a much more accurate micro gram scale that is the one that I would use but for this purpose so you can visualize what I'm doing I use the uh, mailing type scale so you can see I was able to refill this to the OEM capacity so assuming that the chip can communicate with the wetness sensor or the air sensor this cart should be able to be reused now I would have filled it with um, probably an uh, image specialist gloss optimizer and the same thing goes for the rest of the carts it's a uh, another way to refill I mean there's an is another way to reuse these carts so that they don't end up in the landfill although you know you can sell them or give them away to uh, staples and possibly get some credit from the store okay until the next time happy printing and bye bye